Welcome, boys and girls. How y'all doing this morning? Uncle Ernie, what are you doing? We're not started yet. What do you mean we ain't started? Well, uh, I'm trying to look at my notes and make sure we got everything right. Look at the camera, Timmy. Uh-oh. We have started, haven't we? <laughs> hey, boys and girls. Good to see you back this morning. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we're trying to get started. Another video from Mount Carver and uh, Mount Carver Church and uh, we just want to welcome all our boys and girls that, uh, for Junior Church that's not been able to come. We miss you, don't we, Uncle Ernie? Yes, we do miss them. Every one of them. I miss all them hugs. Yeah, I bet you do. Uh, but, and, uh, you know, with all everything that's going on, uh, you know, people are sick. Uh, there's a lot of people died from this, this bad virus. And But, you know, our God is still on the throne. He still uh, will look after us. We just got to put our faith and our trust in him. Right, Uncle Ernie? Yeah, that's right. Trust in Jesus. That's right. Trust in the Lord. Um, <clears throat> so, and especially our visitors, we're glad to have you. Uh, we hope in a few weeks or, you know, a short time, we can get back to having regular church, you know, where you can come and be with us and we can sing together. It makes it a lot easier uh, when you're here. Um, because we love you and we care for you and uh, we've just been missing you. So just be with us and uh, welcome back. All right, now we're going to start with our prayer request. Uh, remember, no prayer is too great or too small for the Lord. I mean, he hears and answers all our prayers. You know, if we just, if, if we're sincere when we pray, God does answer our prayers. Does he always say yes? No, Uncle Ernest, sometimes God says no. Sometimes we ask for things that, uh, you know, God doesn't really think we need. Or, or And sometimes God says, so, so he says yes sometimes. Sometimes he says no, but sometimes he just says wait. Wait, and I don't like to wait. I know you don't like to wait, Uncle Ernest, but, you know, you know, we have to wait on the Lord. The Bible tells us that we need to wait on the Lord. Okay, now our prayer request, boys and girls. Um, oh, I about to forget about something. What? Oh, uh, parents, please remember to help us. Uh, we still uh, about the quiet seat prize. Uh, if you just watch your kids and make sure they're listening and paying attention, boys and girls, we want to see eyes up on us. Listen, be quiet, and class participation. That's what it takes to get a treat uh, at the end of. At the end of the lesson, okay? All right, so so parents, please help us and uh, treat your kids. And uh, we know you will, but only treat them now <laughs> if they've done good. Because um, God doesn't reward us when we've done bad, does he? No, he sure doesn't. Uh, so, you know, uh, we need to just trust in the Lord and, and do his will, okay? All right, prayer request. We need to pray for our country. Um, you know, a lot of things going on. There's a lot of people out of work, and uh, there's a lot of people sick. And uh, like I said, a lot of people have, have died. And we need to pray for them and their families. And and the boys and girls, I know you have needs. You, you know, uh, every Sunday I can remember a lot of boys and girls praying for their grandparents and uh, their moms and dads or their brothers and sisters. Or maybe they're praying for they scrape their knee. Or like I said, no prayer is too great or too small for the Lord. But uh, we need to pray for all these things. Pray we can get back to church soon. Because, uh, like I say, we miss you. So uh, at this time, I'm going to be praying. I'm going to pray out loud. And you can pray out loud since you're at home if you want to. But everybody's praying, not just me. Uh, you too, Uncle Ernie. Oh, me too? Okay. Do I pray out loud? No, don't you pray quiet so they can hear me, okay? All right. So now we're going to pray, every head bowed and every eye closed. Lord, we also thank for God for this day. Lord, thank you so much for uh, what you're doing for us. Thank you, Lord, for our opportunity, Lord, to uh, show our church folks and, and our visitors the videos to, uh, to help them to learn how to be a better Christian and a better servant for you. And pray, God, if anybody's just listening this morning, if they're not saved, that uh, that they trust in you as their Lord and Savior this morning. Lord, we pray, God, for all the requests that the, the children are asking for this morning, for their parents and their grandparents and their family and friends and, and just the needs of, of our world. Just pray for America, God, that America 
Our Lord will serve you and be a Christian nation like it once was, Lord. And just um, thank you, God, for everything. Thank you for loving us so much. Uh, be with us this morning as we uh, uh, do Junior Church. And just thank you again for loving us so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, next song, boys and girls, we're going to sing is Jesus Loves the Little Children. Okay, I want everybody uh, standing up and I want everybody singing, okay? Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Amen. That's good, boys and girls. You did good. Now, boys and girls, uh, Miss Chanel is going to do our missionary story from her. She did a real good job last week, and we want to give her a big hand at the end of her lesson today, okay? Now, Miss Chanel, come on. All right. Good morning. I am excited about the mission story today, and uh, you'll find out what happens to Mary Slessor. And we want to... Uh, the main thing I want you to remember in this story today is Mary Slessor was willing to obey God and do whatever he wanted her to do, even if it meant Mary Slessor going to Africa. And I talked to you about last week, we'll review just a little bit about Mary's father. Do you remember how Mary's father was? Was he a good dad or a bad dad? And uh, you remember they didn't have much because what did he do with it? Um, can you answer that and tell me what did he do with the money that he made? Yes, he drunk it. And then Mary, at about the age of 11, got asked, saved and asked Jesus to come into her life. And from that point, her dad had passed away and her and her mom had to work. And she worked um, instead of going to school. Can you imagine that? 12 hours a day, she worked. And she would go to church every single Sunday. And she began to hear about Calabar, Africa. And she began to, the Lord began to like just move in her heart about this place called Calabar, Africa. And she learned that they had all these customs and their cultures and different things that were evil. And they believed in evil spirits. And so she began to teach while she was in Scotland, in Dundee. She began to teach a Bible lesson on the worst street in the town. And one night as she was leaving, remember I told you last week where we stopped off, is that a gang of boys that did not like her, got around her and surrounded her, and the leader began to take around and around this piece of sharp metal, and it actually came across her forehead. And she continued to stare him down and look him in the eyes. And because she never moved and didn't do anything, didn't say anything, he was like, man, you're brave. We'll, we'll let you go anywhere. So he decided he was gonna let Mary go anywhere she wanted to go, and that he now would actually protect her. And she, in a bold, bold way, even though those boys were outnumbered her, she said, well, now you need to come to Bible class. And so some of the boys did. They actually began to come to Bible class. You see them in this picture. They came to the Bible study, and many of them actually got saved. And Mary began to learn that life can be hard, but you can follow God, and amazing things can happen, boys and girls. And so finally, the time came, she talked to her mom, and she said, Mama, I love being here in Scotland. I love you. I love my sisters. But her sisters were old enough now to take care of themselves and to take care of their mom and that new baby that they had had. And so she said, Mom, I really feel like God wants me to go to Calabar, Africa. Now, I want you to realize how many thousands of miles that is away. Do you think that Mary Slessor's mom said, No, I don't want you to go? Or do you think she was like, Yes, do God's will? That's right. She said, I want you to do God's will. No matter where it takes you, Mary, I want you to do God's will. So the time came. She got on a big ship and she began to try what it took five weeks on that ship. It was a huge ship. It was called the SS Ethiopia is what it was called. And as she began to get farther and farther away from Scotland, the weather got warmer and warmer and warmer until it got really hot. And then in Scotland, the skies were gray and dreary, and the skies began to get light and tropical, and she saw birds. And then she also saw other things in the water. Now, these things are cute, but they're not cuddly. Um, they are very territorial. You see the hippos in the water. We think of them as cute little stuffed animals, but they're very aggressive. Uh, she began to see things that she had never seen before. And finally, the ship stopped. 
and they dropped her off. And she began to work at a station teaching boys and girls. And the first place she went in um, Yorktown is what it was called. There was lots of missionaries. There were missionaries everywhere. And you know what? She began to see that most people in Yorktown knew about God and that most of them, she was teaching on Bible stories, but there wasn't many people getting saved. So Mary would venture out into the jungle deeper and deeper, and people would tell her, Mary, don't go out there. It's dangerous. You've got to have a chaperone. You've got to have somebody with you. Mary changed. She began to not look like herself in Scotland. In Scotland, they wore fancy dresses, and then their hair was all put up, and they had on nice shoes. Mary had a big baggy dress that she wore all the time. She cut her hair short that beautiful red curly hair, she cut it short so it wouldn't be in her way and she could get where she needed to get. And then she took off her shoes and began not to wear shoes anywhere. She didn't wear shoes anywhere. The whole jungle, she went around barefoot. And she would go from village to village and she would teach them about Jesus. And she began to know the language so well that she could speak to anybody. She could go. And Mary talked to them about this this culture, these things that they did. She talked to the ladies and she said, why do y'all think that twin babies are evil? And they talked about that it wasn't normal for somebody to have twin babies, have two babies in their stomach. And so you know what these people would do? They would abandon them in the jungle or they would either kill them. And then the mother was kicked out of the community, out of the village with nowhere to go if she had twin babies. So Mary, all of a sudden, the next day she got up and there was a baby on her porch, an abandoned baby just sitting there. And so Mary goes to pick it up. She didn't know whose it was, but she decided she was going to take care of it. And then another day, another baby. And there were several abandoned babies. And then she rescued her first set of twins right here. She rescued them. It was a boy and a girl. The boy, unfortunately, didn't live. But the little girl lived, and she named the little girl after her sister, Janie. And this little girl grew up to be the, right beside her. At the very end of our story, you'll see that Janie was always with Mary. And she began to just take care of children. And then she'd go from village to village, and she would help people and give them medicine. And everybody around the area began to know about, about her. And sometimes they would come to her if there was a big fight amongst the villages and the chiefs, and they would come and they would say, Ma, they called her Ma, Ma, run, run, Ma, run. And so she would take off running in her bare feet, and she would go there, and she'd put her finger in that chief's face and, and tell him, y'all need to quit fighting. And so she began to take care of them like that in deep in the jungle and where people told her not to go. And then something scary happened. She contracted malaria, and she had to go home for months and months and months. I think it was about three months she had to go home because there was nothing there to help take care of her. And Mary was sad when she got on the boat and she went back to Scotland. It felt like her dreams were shattered. And so she went home and she got better and better. People thought she would stay in Scotland. And she decided that she was going back to Calabar, Africa. So she got back on the boat. She went back to Calabar. And as soon as she got there, Somebody came to her and they said, Ma, run, Ma, run. There was a chief that was 30 miles away. Imagine running 30 miles. There was 30 miles away that wanted her. And so she ran there and then they got in a canoe, all her children. Can you imagine having to drag all these children with you? And so she began to drag the children with her. And while she was there, this really bad tornado came and it knocked over the roofs and it knocked down barns and it knocked down stuff. And you could see animals flying and you could see all kinds of damage. And so she took the children inside of one of the huts and they began to sing. They began to sing a song to try to help calm their nerves. And they were soaking wet, soaking wet. And you know what happened? For days, Mary began to get sicker and sicker and sicker, she was covered with water and in the hot African jungle. And she had to decide what to do. Do I go home or do I stay here? What do I do? Who's gonna take care of my little babies? If I go, who takes care of them? And so next week, you'll decide, we'll just see what Mary does, whether she goes back to Scotland or she decides to stay in Africa.
Thank you, boys and girls, for listening, and I love you, and I hope you enjoy this. Okay, Uncle Ernie, now we're going to do our review. Uh, what were some of the things, Uncle Ernie, that we talked about last week in our lesson? Oh, we talked about a bush burning. Yeah, uh, that's nothing unusual for a bush to be burning, is it? Well, it is if the bush don't burn up like that one didn't. That's right. And uh, who did we find out that was uh, talking from the burning bush? It was God. That's exactly right. So we talked about the burning bush and we talked about God. Uh, what else did we talk about, Uncle, Uncle Ernie? Uh, take your shoes off. That's right. I bet the boys and girls like that, being able to take the shoes off. Because uh, God told them to take the shoes off for the ground that, they, that Moses was on was holy ground. Can I take my shoes off? No, no Uncle Ernie. Uh, we in junior church. You got to keep shoes on in junior church, okay? Okay. All right. And what else do we talk about, Uncle Ernie? Uh, let's see what else. Let me see. Uh, you know what else we talked about? What? We talked about God's call. You know, God calls us all to uh to do his will and, and who was god calling last week moses he wanted moses to bring the children of israel out of egypt that's exactly right uncle Ernie. he wanted them uh god to use uh moses to bring the children of israel, israel out of egypt okay uh, and uh we're gonna start right there with our reviews and and uh we're gonna do the lesson that okay with you yeah, that's okay. You want me to sit back down? Uh, yeah, Uncle Ernie, I want you to go sit down, okay? And be quiet. Okay, boys and girls, now we're going to start with our lesson for the week. Uh, that's the basic reason we're here, to learn about God, God's Word, and uh, to study God's Word and to learn how to be a good Christian and to grow up uh, to serve the Lord. Uh, today's lesson, I've entitled it, Who Am I? And Who Am I? is God. So who am I and who is God? Uh, we're still following our story with Moses in the book of Exodus. And this morning we're going to be reading from Exodus. Um, let's see where I'm at. Exodus chapter 3, start with verse 11. Exodus chapter 3, verse 11. If you remember from last week, Moses uh what Uncle Ernie was talking about, Moses went up on the mountains to, to see this burning bush, and God was speaking to Moses from the burning bush. And God told Moses he wanted him to lead his children out of Egypt because they had been persecuted, they had been mistreated so badly. <clears throat> and then verse 11 says, And Moses said to God, Who am I? that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. Uh, Moses said to the Lord, God, who am I? I mean, I'm, I'm nobody. But you know, God always, when he calls you to do something, he will make a way for you. He will provide what you need to get his work done. And let's see what he says. Verse 12 says, and he said, certainly, I will be with you. God told Moses, I will be with you. You know, like I said, God doesn't call us to do anything that he's not willing to help us. Let's read on. <clears throat> and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mount. So in other words, God told Moses, when you bring the children of Israel out of Egypt, you're going to come back to this mountain and you're going to serve and worship God here on this mountain for a while. And Moses said to God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? So Moses said, Lord, who am I? to tell them they sent me. And God, this is what God says, if you read on down, verse 14 says, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am sent me unto you. 
All right, so God told Moses, just tell him, I am has sent you. You know, God in the Bible goes by many different names. You know, and we say, well, what? Well, there's only one God. That's true. But just think about it. Your mother, you may call her mom. Her dad will call her daughter. Her mom will call her daughter. Her husband will call her wife. You know, and people will say she's a lady. You know, different names for the same person. In the Bible, when it refers to God in different names, it's talking about the different uh, parts about being, you know, God the different ways we talk with God. So he said, say, I am that brought you. Okay? All right, now we're going to skip on over to verse uh, chapter 4 of Exodus, the book of Exodus, and we're going to start with verse 1. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, the Lord hath not appeared unto thee. So Moses is saying uh, to God, to God, just because I, say, I said that uh, you told me to do this, I mean, they're not going to believe me. That, that's like God saying, well, God hasn't talked to you. I mean, you know, uh, so Moses said, well, God, I got to have some evidence or give me something. To, to prove to them that you sent me. And the Lord, verse 2 says, And the Lord said to him, What is in thy hand? And he said, A rod. I'm going to stop right there. Because guess what? I have got a rod. Now, this is a rod that I'm making for my wife and is carrying for a walking stick, okay? So she could use it to get around with. Uh, and I'm still working on it. But, you know, I thought about this. Similar to probably a rod like Moses used. You know, why did Moses have a rod? He was a shepherd. Remember, when he was up around the mountain, he was looking after the sheep. And a shepherd used a rod to, you know, uh, lead the sheep along. And he also used the rod to, like if an animal came up and tried to take one of the lambs, to maybe hit the animal or to run him off. But, you no, know, Moses, a shepherd, always used a rod or we refer to it a lot of times as a staff. All right. <clears throat> so let's see. So God asked Moses, what you got in your hand? He said, a rod. Verse 3 said, and he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. Became a serpent. You know what a serpent is? That's a snake. So Moses, uh, he cast it on the ground, and verse 3 says, And Moses fled from it, from before it. You know, if you cast a, a rod on the ground and it turns into a snake, I would run. Most people would run if they see a snake anyway, right? Because they're afraid of snakes. My wife is especially afraid of snakes. So, and you may be too. But this time, God was using what Moses had in his hand to show the people, that, hey, this is God. Just talking with you. All right. So, then, and verse 4 says, And then the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. Now, I'm sure glad God has asked me to grab a snake by the tail or my wife because she would pass out. And maybe some of you. But Moses did what the Lord said, and he put forth his hand and called it, and it became a rod again in his hand. Ah, right. they that may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, have appeared unto thee. So in other words, this was a sign. This was something that normally does not happen. You know, do that, you know, and that's one of the signs that the people will believe that God has sent you, that I am have sent you. Verse 6 says, and the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. In other words, Moses, take your hand and stick it in your shirt. And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. In other words, when he put his normal hand in, when he pulled it back out, 
it had turned into leprosy. And that was a disease, boys and girls, where actually a leper, their flesh would actually start to rot off of their body. Um, and that was a real bad disease back then. And Moses pulled his hand out, and it was white as snow. It had leprosy on it. And he said, put thine hand into thy, to thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out and of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. In other words, when he put his hand in his shirt, when he pulled it out that second time, it had turned back normal. And, you know, God told Moses this was signs that he was going to use to show the people that, hey, what he's telling you is the truth. All right, verse 8 says, And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river, and pour it upon the dry land. And the, the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. So God told Moses, also he gave him another sign. If you take the water out of the, out of the river and pour it on the dry land, that it would turn to blood. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither herefore uh, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So Moses, he gave, let me put this back. Moses gave another excuse. That God, how can you use me? You know, I don't even speak good. You know, at this time, I think the Lord was getting a little angry with Moses. <laughs> he said, you know, well, let's see what the Lord says. Uh, verse 11 says, And the Lord said to him, Who hath made thy mouth? So God said to Moses, Who do you think made your mouth? I made your mouth. That's what God says. Or who made the dumb or the deaf? or the sea, or the blind, have not I, the Lord? So, you know, God's letting Moses, hey, no, you know, if, if I tell you to do something and ask you to do something, I'm going to provide for you. Now, therefore, go, and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, and this is talking about Moses, O oh, my Lord, sin I pray thee uh, by the hand of him whom thou wilt sin. And verse 14 says, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron thy, the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. All right. So God told Moses, Well, Moses, all right then, if you don't want to do the speaking or do the talking, your brother, Aaron's coming, and he's going to be your spokesman. He's going to be your mouthpiece. Verse 15 says, And thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach uh, you what ye shall do. Uh, so God told Moses, Hey, I've got it under control. Boys and girls, we did we just need to just put our faith and our trust in the Lord. He's never going to call us to do anything that he's not going to uh, give us what we need to do it with. You know, he helped Moses. You know, he gave him the signs. But also, he used Aaron, his brother, to do his speaking for him. But boys and girls, whatever God asks us to do, he will always give us what we need. You know, so how do we know? How does God teach us to do his will? You know, God, it says there that God will teach him what he should say and what he should do. You know, we are being taught from God's precious word. You know, God uses teachers. He uses uh, your Sunday school teachers. 
Jesus is our pastor. You know, even singing songs, we learn about God through his precious word, through songs. And, uh, you know, God's going to make a way for us, but we got to trust in him. But if you don't read your Bible, how can God talk to you? And if you don't pray to God, how can God know what your requests are? So, boys and girls, we need to go to God with everything in our life. And God will make a way for us. And at this time, uh, especially our viewers, I don't know who's here that's not saved, that's listening this morning. But I'm going to pray. And I want you uh, at home, if you are not saved, all you got to do is say, God, come into my heart and life. Forgive me my sins. And if you mean it in your heart, God will save you. And any boys and girls that have a need now, bring those needs to God. So let's pray. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Lord, I pray for the boys and girls this morning that they've listened and that, Lord, that we will uh, just trust in you. If you ask us to do something, you will give us what we need, Lord, to get your work accomplished. And I just pray, God, since anybody here this morning is not saved, that right now that they uh, will trust in you uh, to save them and they will ask for forgiveness of their sins. And you said you would cast their sins as far as the east is from the west. And we know, God, that when you say something, that you will do it. And I just pray to anybody this morning that now that they will pray and that they will be saved. And we know, God, you said you would forgive me. Thank you again for loving us and be with us, God, as, as we finish up this day. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls, it's time for us to leave. Uh, you want to tell them goodbye, Uncle Ernie? Goodbye. We'll see you next week, okay? Everybody, y'all be back. I invite your friends and everybody else. Okay, so boys and girls, we'll see you next week. And remember one thing uh, that I write down every week, but I forget to say it a lot of times. Be good. Jesus loves you. And at Mount Calvary, we do too. Okay, see you later. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody.